Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, here to talk to you about Lee and Lee's Unifans. And I want to talk to you about a number of different things, specifically about Lee and Lee's Unifans, because I've had a load of different questions from various different people over the last few years who have had troubles with the fans, the connections, the wiring, the setup, the airflow directions, and things like that. Now, I've used Lee and Lee's fans in a variety of different builds, on radiators, in cases, I've used the reverse blade fans, the standard blades, the infinity fans, AL120s, SL120s, all the different versions. You're going to see a lot of infinity fans in the background because they're my personal favourite and those are the most recent clips. I just want to show you some of that from other related videos that I'll link down below. But I want to talk to you about issues that people have had and hopefully help you solve some of them if you're thinking about using them or things to be aware of beforehand. That includes setting it up in Lee and Lee's software, the wiring logic and things to be aware of, problems there, firmware updates and airflow and other things. And I'm going to talk briefly about some of the different fans, but one of the things that I don't want to talk about right now is the TLLCD fans because they are a bit more complicated. So if you have any issues with those fans, I'll link to another video that I've done separately down below where I discuss the potential problems with those fans and the things to be aware of because they're a bit more complex and there are some important caveats to using those fans that are important to be aware of including issues with the displays just not working. So those can be a bit problematic. But Lee and Lee's Unifans in general are pretty good because they're really easy to put together, really easy to install and set up and wire and pretty straightforward to use. They're also great looking. And I really like them because they're very quiet. And that's a really important part of the build is they're very quiet. Now, at a basic level, they clip together really easily and they have little contacts between them that allow the RGB lighting and the fan power to travel between fans which means you can set them up in groups so you can have for example multiple groups maybe three on the front for intake three on the bottom for intake three on the top for exhaust and then one at the rear for exhaust as well and you can have multiple sets like that and indeed if you buy a triple pack of the 120 millimeter fans then you get this lovely controller with it now this controller is able to give you power for up to 16 fans and that does that by four groups of four maximum. So you can have four unifans connected together, connected up to a single port, and you can do that four times. And then you could potentially have 16 fans in your system. <laughs> now, for the most part, most people probably aren't going to connect 16 fans in there. Most cases won't take that many fans, and you'll probably just plug in several groups of three and maybe one, as I've done here. So you can see that we've got multiple groups and they're all connected to one single controller and that's fairly straightforward and easy to do and then you can end up with a relatively nice looking system and this is how you'd set it up basic level you've got intake and exhaust but you can make things a bit more complicated so for example in a recent setup my main build i've actually ended up putting six fans on a radiator in a push pull configuration so i've got three fans on one side three fans on another so i want to show you how you would set that up so you can then wire those into the system so you can control the fan speed and keep the coolant inside your cooler nice and cool. Therefore help cooling to your CPU nice and easily. And there are different ways of doing it. I've covered some of these in the past and that can be confusing. So I wanna get onto that in a minute. So stick with me for that. But I also wanna talk about reverse blade fans, which if you're not aware of already, basically have the fan blade facing in a different direction. And this means that you can then get rid of the back view of the fan and instead see the front, which means that you can change the look and feel of your case. So where you've got usually, you'd put the fan face down in the case to pull air in from the bottom. Instead, now you can use the reverse blade fans and you can install them the other way up so that you can then see the infinity mirror and the other bits of the lighting on the bottom of your case, but still have intake. So you then got a nicer view. Now you do sacrifice some things because the performance of those fans isn't quite as good. The specs are slightly worse, so they don't give as good airflow, but you do get a very nice aesthetic. And then you end up with a build, which on the face of it at a glance looks like all the fans are set in the same direction, when in fact they're not. You can see the standard and reverse blade fans here alongside each other, and you'll notice the difference in the blade design and the way they face and that influences how the air flows through the fan and the direction of the airflow as it comes into your case. 
You'll also notice if you flip them over, you'll see a different design on the back because the standard fans have their cables hidden a bit better because obviously you wouldn't want those visible if you're putting them into the case. But with the reverse blade, you don't need to worry about it. And here you can see I've got intake set up. So we've got reverse blade fans on the bottom and the side so that we have a nice bit of airflow with intake and then exhaust on the top and rear. I've actually found this is a really good format for me as well. I've done a separate video on that and where to mount your all-in-one cooler. With the wiring, it's very important that you consider a few different things, and that is the connections. This is a mistake that a lot of people make. You need to make sure that you connect up a lot of these. You need the SATA power and you need the USB connection as a minimum. You don't necessarily need to worry about the system fan header and the 5 volt RGB connection unless you're going to be using the motherboard syncing capabilities and you want to control those things from your motherboard. At a basic level, you definitely need the USB connection and you definitely need the SATA power. And that is the power that's connected to your power supply unit via that little cable that also gives power to, let's say, your hard disk drives and your SSDs. It's that flat connector with an L-shaped connection in it you plug that in, you connect that up, and then you need to power up the controller. Now, I'd usually recommend plugging in both of those, and I'm going to show you why. If you do that, it also allows the sync port to get power, and I'll talk about the sync port in a second. And this logic applies no matter what fans you're using, whether it's the Infinities or the SLs or the ALs, all of those other fans, the only difference being the TL, which has different wiring. But you can see that you can then connect up all that. Now, as I said, 5 volt RGB, System fan headers, those are optional if you're using this controller. You only need them if you want to use your motherboard software, but the USB is essential. Don't forget that. And a lot of people have this issue where they haven't connected that and then they're wondering why it doesn't work in L Connect. They can't update the firmware or maybe other things aren't working properly. So use that USB connection and then not only will the lighting work, but you can also customize things a bit more. And more importantly, you can also update the firmware, which is really important too. I've now disappeared from view so that we can concentrate on the important things of seeing what's going on. Now with L Connect, I'd recommend if you've got it installed already, completely uninstall it from your system and then download the latest version. If you're having any problems, that is one of the first steps. And it sounds stupid, but Lee and Lee keeps releasing different versions that then can still stay in your system and conflict with each other. The other thing I'd suggest is also making sure your firmware is updated, which is why the USB connection is so important. There's a separate tool, which is actually more effective in my experience than L Connect to update the firmware of your controller and then improve the usability of the fans. I'll leave links to this in the description. All you need to do is download this separately and you'll get a load of different files for all the different fans and the streamers, for example, included in a zip file that you then need to extract. If you extract all of this, you'll then find a folder on your system which has a USB ISP dialog application in it. What you need to do is run that it will then scan for devices, it will find the various different controllers on your system and you can see them listed, find the relevant ones and then go through, browse into the folder that you've extracted and in there you should hopefully find the relevant firmware for the controller for the system that you're using. Now in this recording I've already updated my firmware but you should find hopefully that you've got an update, you can then start that update and run it on your controller and then that will hopefully fix any problems. This is especially useful for RGB errors. If you've got problems with the RGB is not working or your fans aren't behaving properly, it could well be the controller that's the issue rather than anything else. As long as you've got the wiring correct, this should hopefully fix that problem. And you can update the firmware with an L Connect, but that's a much more effective way of doing it. Now I want to talk about what to do if you're putting the fans on a radiator. So I've often used Lee and Lee's fans on various different radiators. Now here I've got an NZXT Kraken Elite and because you've got RGB Lee and Lee fans throughout the case, I don't want to use NZXT's fans on there because that would look weird to have a mix. So I'm using reverse blade 120 millimeter fans on the radiator. And yes, you can do this with any radiator. And indeed, I've done it with a lot of different ones. I've done it with Corsairs, for example. And that can mean that you have a full system of Lee and Lee's fans in your case, and it looks a lot nicer. So what you need is your fan set up. And there are different ways of doing it. And as I said, 
I'm going to show you those. One of them is to use the standard included cable you get with a single fan. This has two connections on it, the RGB and the fan power. Now what you can do is you can plug the 5 volt RGB connection into your motherboard on that 3 pin header on there and then you could control the RGB lighting from your motherboard software. Now obviously this wouldn't sync with the other fans if you're using L-Connect, so it's something to bear in mind and that is a potential issue but this does free up the other power cable so the other one that's the power for the fans you can connect that potentially for example to the crack and cooler via this splitter that comes out of it if you connect it to the four pin cable on there you can plug that in and then that enables the pump to control the fan speed the pump itself would then be connected to the aio pump header on your motherboard and then both the fan speed and the pump header are all controlled by nzxt software you can, of course, do this slightly differently. You could plug the cable into the CPU fan head on your motherboard instead. So instead of directly to the pump, let's say you've got another cooler that doesn't allow that, you can plug that into the CPU fan header. If you have Lee and Lee fans on them that have this sync cable instead, you could plug that into the Lee and Lee controller. You can also get an adapter which converts that 5 volt RGB cable into that connector that plugs into the sync port on the controller. You can buy that separately, but it's a bit hard to find. I've recommended it in the past and people have struggled with it. So there is another solution. The other thing you can do, which is what I'm doing now, is you can theoretically just use the flat connectors, plug them into a port on the controller, and then just make a note of which port you've plugged into. So I've got two groups of fans here, and I know what ports they're plugged into. Make a mental note of that. Then when they're installed on the radiator, as they are here, what you then need to do is obviously connect them up and then think about that in the L-Connect software. Because what you can do is you can actually adjust the fan speed of these fans so that they respond to the CPU temperature, which means that they'll then speed up and slow down depending on how hot or cool your CPU is. This can obviously be really useful. This is a much easier way of doing it potentially if you want to use the L-Connect software and you have enough ports available. So before I get into that, I just want to quickly mention something else and show it in L-Connect. The mixing and matching of fans. So I mentioned earlier on about what you can do, whether you're putting different fans into your system. You will notice I've got all Infinity fans in my case, but if you wanted to put, let's say, some Infinity fans and some TL fans and some AL120 fans in there, and have different sorts of fans. I'd highly recommend using the separate controllers for each. I don't believe you can or should, and Lee and Lee definitely recommends not using the same controller for different fans. So you can't just plug in Infinity fans into an SL120 controller, for example, or an AL120. The connections are different, and for the TL fans, for example, it's a lot more complicated because of the LCD display, so they have a separate controller for that, and it's got different firmware. So if you are gonna mix and match fans, you do need different controllers for them. However, what you can do is you can mix and match fans in terms of the size of a fan. So you can see here, for example, we've got 140 millimeter fans and 120 millimeter fans in the same build. I've got six 140 millimeter fans in my case, three on the bottom and three on top. And then the rest of the fans, which is seven, 120 millimeter fans are on the radiator and at the rear of the case and you can tell AL Connect software what fans are where and if you want to you can have separate controllers so if you've got loads you can have two controllers as you can see that I've got here and you can see what the RPMs are and other things. Now I've gone into a lot more depth on L Connect and a separate video that I'll link down below. But I just wanted to show that and some other things in here so you can see obviously 120 millimeter and 140 millimeter also both reverse blade and standard orientation all on the same controller because it doesn't make any difference the system doesn't recognize the difference between them so it won't be able to tell you that they're reverse blade versus standard blade but they work just fine on the same controller so you can mix and match the same version so all infinity but different sizes and different reverse blade and standard blades you can put them all on the same controller without a problem now You'll see here that Infinity Controller 2 only has two ports filled, so port 3 and port 4. You can see that because it's got some amount of RPM going on it, and it's the 120 millimeter fans. These are the fans on the radiator, and you'll notice it says CPU temperature. Down here in the fan profile, you can do a number of things, including selecting 
what speed it's on. So quiet, standard speed, high speed, full speed, and custom. You can turn start, stop on and off. So they will go to zero RPM if you want that to be a thing. Well, you can also adjust the custom fan curve, so you can change in there. But what's important here is that you can set the fans to respond to the CPU temperature. So we're setting it so that these fans will speed up and slow down depending on the CPU temperature. Now on the other controller, some of the fans are mounted on the bottom of the case right below the graphics card. So instead, I've set those to respond to GPU temperature. So now these fans will spin up and cause more airflow if my GPU gets too hot. So that shows you the power of what you can do there in L Connect, and it's worth bearing in mind because that is one of the things that you can do there to adjust your system. Now, obviously, if you've got all your fans on a single controller, you can still apply this same logic because you could go into one of the fan groups and you can see that you can adjust them individually. So we could set this one to CPU, for example. You'll notice that's now CPU and the rest of them are GPU. So it doesn't need to have two separate controllers. It's just the way it's ended up in my system. But if you're using just one controller, you can go through, remember which port you've plugged in where in your system, and then you can adjust that accordingly, depending on the direction of the airflow and where things are set up. The other thing you can do is you can go into system settings and set it to auto run on boot, hide on system tray, minimize so you can't see any of it but it'll make sure that everything's running properly. You can also go in and tell your system how many fans are on each port so you can set it up so it knows how many fans are on each port there. And then that will help with the lighting because the lighting will then adjust properly and sync across all the fans. So if you find that some of the fans aren't lighting up, it could be because you've not set this up properly in the controller section. So you need to tell it how many fans you've got in there. And then the other thing is you can also check for updates for both the firmware and for the L-Connect software in here. However, I have found that actually sometimes L-Connect doesn't get the latest update from here, so it pays to look at the website occasionally. So if you're having problems, that might well be it. Just don't forget to uninstall the original version and install the new version manually because they can both end up on your system separately, which is stupid and frustrating and can cause issues. So hopefully I've covered a lot of different things here which have been of use to you just with the logic and explaining things. And if they have, then subscribe for more and check out the videos linked down below or go into more depth on other things. And hopefully you found this useful. If you have, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.